Hey there, we're on the June 2012, page six, the beginning of the part B questions. And they start with question number 36, the length of a football field. This is an estimation question. Do you know if it's uh, a thousand kilometers? A thousand millimeters, let's uh, see what that is. A uh, thousand millimeters in a meter. So that's one meter, that'd be short football field. A thousand centimeters, which would be 10 meters. That's probably not it. So I guess the right answer would be a thousand decimeters. Now decimeters is not a unit used by normal humans. And so that's 10 to the negative one. So a thousand times 10 to the negative one would be a uh, hundred meters. And that would be a uh, closest of the options given. Question 37, a student on an amusement park ride moves in a circular path. Ooh, I hate these things, it makes me throw up every time. Uh, the radius is uh, 3.5 meters. Uh, moves in a circular path with a radius of once every uh, 8.9 seconds. So he goes around once every 8.9 seconds. The period of oscillation would be 8.9 seconds. So the average velocity, the average speed, because it's not velocity, it's changing direction, so it can't be velocity. So um, a speed or velocity would be distance over time. And you might not remember this, but I think it's on your formula sheet. You can find the circumference of a circle, that the area is pi r squared, but the circumference is 2 pi r. So you could say that the velocity would be equal to 2, pi r divided by the time or the period of oscillation. So you can say that the velocity is equal to 2 times pi times 3.5 all divided by 8.9. And this would be meters, this would be seconds. Your answer would be meters per second, so that works. So nothing left for it but the calculator. Question 38. When a one kilogram cart moving with a speed of 0.5 meters per second on a horizontal surface, so mass is one kilogram, uh, velocity is 0.5 meters per second, horizontal cart, so there's no ramp or anything. It collides with a second one kilogram cart initially at rest, the carts lock together. What is the speed of the combined carts after the collision? Well, this is a conservation momentum. The momentum before a collision is equal to momentum after. So M1 V1 plus M2 V2 before is equal to M1 plus M2 times V2. Because now they're stuck together, so it's one big mass traveling over velocity. And so uh, I could uh, do the math, but I'm going to say that uh, the answer's got to be less than half a meter per second. And that gets me to the right answer without doing any math. In fact, twice the mass, it'll be half the velocity, so the math was easy. But um, as long as you knew it was going to slow down, but it probably won't stop, so. Question 39, two elevators A and B moving at a constant speed. Elevator moves with twice the speed of elevator. Two elevators A and B moving at constant speed. Elevator B moves with twice the speed of elevator A. Elevator B weighs twice as much as elevator A. Compared to the power needed to lift elevator A, the power needed to lift elevator B is. Compared to A, B's got to be greater. Well, that's just weirdly worded. Two elevators A and B move at a constant speed. Elevator B moves with twice the speed of elevator A. So basically, this sentence doesn't make any sense. They move at constant speed. If it had twice the, the weight, it would have twice, it would require twice the power. Uh, but if it's moving at twice the speed, the formula needed for this is going to be found here in the power. And it's uh, force times velocity. So for A, it would be some force times some velocity, 1 times 1. And for elevator B, 
it's going to be twice the velocity, and it's twice as massive, so it's going to be twice the force. So 2 times 2 is 4. That's what I'm thinking. Question 40, what is the maximum height to which a motor having a power rating of 20.4 watts can lift a mass of 5 kilograms, time of 10 seconds, and what's the maximum height? We're looking for height. Well, let's go find something. Well, here we've got power of force times distance over time. Listen, if I took the mass on this planet, that would give me a force equal to mg, which just for this purpose is, we'll see if it works, I'm just going to call it 50 newtons. Actually, it'd be less than that. But uh, let's see what I can do with this. Power equals force times distance over time. Power times time would be equal to force times distance. And uh, power times time divided by force would be equal to my distance. So 10 times uh, 20.4, so that's 204 divided by 50. So I'm looking at 4 something. Yeah. 41, what is the current in a wire? Uh, if 3.4 times 10 to the 19 electrons, time of equal to 60 seconds. Well, um, the unit of current is coulombs per second. And a coulomb is a number of electrons, a number of charges. Coulomb is a number much like dozen, only it stands for a lot more. One coulomb of charge is 6.25 times 10 to the 18 charges, elementary charge. So uh, one coulomb is one coulomb, 6.25 times 10 to the um, 18. I think the first thing I got to do is find out how many uh, charges. I've got this many electrons, and uh, how many coulombs of charge is that? So I did this. I said I've got uh, 3.4 times 10 to the 19 electrons. A coulomb, or a dozen, would be divided by 12, but now a coulomb is divided by 6.25 times 10 to the 18, which lives, leaves me with... Um, 5.44 coulombs, and 5.44 coulombs divided by 60 seconds gives me about 0 0.09, or 9 times 10 to the negative 2. Question 42, which graph represents the relationship between the magnitude of the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on a spacecraft and the distance between the center of the, scrape, and the spacecraft and the center of the Earth? This is the gravitational equation formula. F equals, uh, no, that's electricity. It's the same one, mechanics. F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Now, this is a proportionality problem, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to make up values for mass and mass and G. I'm just going to call them all ones. So I'm going to say F is equal to 1 over R squared. As my distance goes up, I can put in pretend numbers, what's uh, force and r? If I say um, force, or r is 1, then my force is 1 divided by 1 squared, 1. If this is 2, then it's uh, a, uh, a fourth. And if it's 3, it's a ninth. So basically, I'm looking for a graph that goes down. As the distance gets further away, the gravitational force decreases. So it gets rid of 1 and 2 right off the bat. And in fact, it's nonlinear. This is uh, going from um, 1 to a half to a ninth to a sixteenth. And nobody would put up with that. The correct answer is 4. 43. This is an interesting question. To increase the brightness of a desk lamp, a student replaces the 50 watt with a 100 watt. Compared to the 50, the 100 watt bulb has less or more resistance, and it draws more or less current. 
So let's look at this. And less resistance would have a positive effect on power, uh, but more power means more current drawn. So it's going to be less resistance and more current. I'm going to say the answer to 43 is 1. Question 44. Electrons and excited hydrogen are in the N3 energy state. How many different photon frequencies could be emitted as the atom returns to the ground state? So this could be, this is, this is like one of those IQ tricks. Make sure you count the real triangle. So I could jump from N3 down to N2. That would produce a photon. I then can go from N2 to N1, and that would produce a photon. But interestingly enough, I can go from N3 to ground, and that would produce its own photon. So I'm going to say that the answer is 3. And in fact, um, I can't think of a better answer. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it.